Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 64. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the supercar open. This is semi-pro body style races. Um, we're going to be starting off with the McLaren MP4-12C. And just for context, if anyone doesn't realize, my voice is dead today. So it's going to sound not 100% this video. We are starting off with Miguelo, then Circuit de Catalunya, Bernie's Alps, Road America, and then Silverstone. Let's get going. Right, I'm going to try and whiz through these races as quick as possible, because uh, I, I genuinely need to try and record as much content as possible over the next few, uh, what's it called? The next few days. So today I'm recording all of these. Tomorrow I'm not going to record anything. Uh, unless it's like late at night. Maybe like a 10 o'clock stream. Just get a couple done. But not guaranteed for tomorrow. But the day after and the day after that, there'll be, there'll be daily streams. Almost daily streams. Like, I need at least six a week at this point. So, the next few weeks are going to be super busy. And just for context, this is actually one of the best choices I made for car. Like, I was debating whether I was going to pick the McLaren F1 or this one. And I went with the decision, the fact that I've already driven the McLaren F1 GTR on one of the Japanese tournaments earlier. I think it was about 10 episodes ago at this point. Something like that. Maybe 10, 12 episodes ago. I made the executive decision to say, fuck it, let's drive the McLaren. Wait, but it was a McLaren anyways. No, fuck it, let's drive the MP4. And uh, I will be 100% honest, this is... This is a beauty. I, I kind of miss these kind of McLarens. Because now a lot of McLarens just follow this weird name and structure. Like, they're all called just five something, five, six something, seven something. Like, I've heard there's a 790S coming out now or something, which is supposed to be the predecessor to the 720. Like, it, it almost sounds like how NVIDIA named their graphics cards. Like, you've got a series and then you've got a generation and whatnot, and it's like... It's a little bit complicated. And then they mix in a couple of cars that have, like, actual names that are, like, unique. Which, I mean, fair enough. But, come on. I still find it crazy, though, that this car came out. McLaren made this car. Which was like, what? Where did McLaren come from? Because they never made their own supercar. McLaren F1 was made and designed by Gordon Murray, I think. McLaren obviously made the car. But, like, this was McLaren doing everything on their own. There was also the McLaren Mercedes, the uh, SLR. But that, again, was a collaboration between Mercedes and McLaren. And a majority of the design aspects were actually done by Mercedes. There are a couple of hints of, like, McLaren in the rear tail lights. <coughs> I didn't mute my mic in time. Ah, oh, lovely. That was great. Uh, yeah, where were we? This was technically the first McLaren, like, supercar. 
of the modern era, I'll add as well. Like, I'd say the modern era is from the 90s onwards. That they had actually made. Like, that's crazy. In my mind. And then a couple of years later, they then turn around and go, Oh, we've done another one. It's called the P1. And it's got, like, close to 800 horsepower. Oh, and by the way, it's hybrid. So we're going into the modern world of supercars. I think it was also insane that Ferrari... Okay, I, d I don't count Ferrari's car as a hybrid. Only because of the fact that that is not a hybrid. Alright, attempt number two. This is the second time I've said attempt number two in this entire series, I think. Or maybe the third time. Um, and that's only because this controller keeps playing up. I think there was one time that I lost, and that was because I didn't realize it was the last lap. So I came second. And obviously I'm trying to get first in all the races. Oh, crap. But then the other two times it's been because the controller hasn't worked. My car just goes in a straight line, crashes into the wall. But the only issue is, with the Xbox, uh, if the controller disconnects from the little dongle, it doesn't detect it as there's no controller connected. Because the dongle is the controller. Anyone that says, like, oh, why are you calling it a dongle? It's a PC fucking term. I don't even know where it comes from, but PC people call it a dongle, so... I, I, don't, I don't understand. But the dongle, it... it it doesn't... What's it called? It doesn't work. No, there's a... The dongle works. But it works as like a controller. It, when it disconnects, it, it still detects as a controller. I don't even know what I'm saying. I've lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, it's, it's such an issue. Because if the controller keeps disconnected, my car will just crash. I don't get the luxury... Like... The enjoyment of having that and being able to use a PS5 controller on an Xbox 360 is amazing. Like, I can use this on a P Xbox 360, I can use it on a uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series console, which I'm going to be getting soon, hopefully. I'm going to get on, like, a subscription basis. It's like £30 a month. But I think it's just easier to pay for it that way. Like, it's going to be more expensive, but I'll have Game Pass. I'll have Games for Gold. So I'll have stuff I can mess around with on the console. And I can try and use cloud gaming. I mean, I've got 5G, so technically speaking, in terms of network bandwidth, I've got plenty for cloud gaming. But again, this is according to, like, Microsoft. It... Cloud gaming's never been perfect for me. Um, though, I haven't actually tried cloud gaming on this PC yet. With the, the wired internet, the super fast broadband. I haven't tried it yet. So, I may have to do some experimentation. If that's even a word. All right. Not too bad. This thing's actually controlling around this circuit really nicely. 
I'm loving this McLaren. I'm absolutely in love with it. I quite enjoyed driving it in a Gran Turismo as well because, if I'm not mistaken, in GT5, it was one of the arcade cars. So, I think that was a good choice from Gran Turismo for that one. Right, here we go. Next race! That's the first lap done. This thing's such a beauty. I mean, have a look at that. The only thing I'm slightly irritated about is this car is technically in automatic mode. Whilst I'm manually shifting gears and the driver is not shifting gears himself but that's a nitpick that's not like a, a bad thing about Here, here's the issue though right a lot of us gamers have gone and nitpicked about these minute details like and genuinely said oh the game's unplayable because it's so unrealistic like how how is that like fucking oh how is that good I can't see my driver shift up and down like normal. Now we've got Forza Motorsport where they focus on all those little details. And guess what? The game is shit. To be fair though, I, I, don't, I don't cut any slack for Forza Motorsport 8. Or the new Forza Motorsport, whatever you want to call it. Because of the fact that, like, when you look at video games from the Xbox One era. Forza Motorsport 5. Oh, shit. Yo, Spring Foxy, what up? FMAI is actually like racing with a bunch of Lance Strolls. They're blind and don't leave the space and make mistakes. Yeah, 100%. Going, going back to what I was saying, because it leads off of that as well. Um... The fact that all the older motorsport games have better AI, better graphics, better compatibility, have a much better campaign, and they had a third of the development time. Right? And the response that Forza then turn around and say, this game was never meant, it was meant to be something that's developed upon. No. 
This is why I hate the live service model. A lot of games and developers are now coming out and saying from their PR teams are saying, oh, this game was meant to be developed in the long run. After launch, after people have spent money on the game, they then turn around and say, oh yeah, this was supposed to be just a development thing. Everyone that's bought Forza Motorsport 8 is beta testers. And it is confirmed by Forza themselves. They're just beta testers. They're testing the game out for what should be a complete release in 3-4 years time when they then move on to the next game. Like, why is it so difficult? Here's the issue I have, right? The way that video games were before, you made a complete game and you added content. For people that didn't want to buy the game at full price, or they wanted to try it out when it was older, or were skeptical, those people would buy the game on sale. The price would go down as the game got older, and eventually it would either get delisted, or it'd be so cheap, you could buy it with literally 30 minutes of working. 30 minutes of pay. A fiver. Something cheap like that. Now, gaming developers are thinking, hey, let's make a video game. But we're going to make it not ready for launch when we launch it. And it's going to be something that we update over time. However, when the game's in a more stable state, we're going to sell it for cheaper. So they're going to sell it on sale six, seven, eight months down the line as opposed to giving price hikes. I'm losing my voice because I'm getting really passionate over this. Here's, here's the slight issue that I have. Well, it's not a slight issue. It's a fucking major issue. If video game developers turned around and went, Right. This game is going to be developed over time. It is a live service model. And there is not going to be a complete campaign when you buy the game. For the first six months of this game's release, we are selling it for £30. After those six months, once the content is added, we will then sell it for £60. So double the price. I would have a million less issues than... Obviously, I'd still be irritated by the live service model, because live service as a whole, unless the game is free outright... I don't think you should be paying for a live service game. Because the content's always changing. What you pay for isn't what you get all the time. That's why I hate live service models. You pay for a game. Yeah, they might add extra things. And you didn't know you were going to pay for that. But at the same time, they're removing stuff that you've paid for. So, in my opinion, live service, terrible. Um, but going beyond that... I think if they did that format, made it cheap, $20 for the first six months, 40 for the next six months, and after a year, full price, alright, I got no issues, and then do it the normal downward going on to sale and whatnot, then that's fine. But the issue is video game developers don't do that, because they want money it's all about money and that's that's what's really bugging me about the video game industry at the moment and it's it's why i refunded forza motorsport like i am not i'm gonna wait for it to be on sale and actually have the content that it should have had at launch before i buy it so rather than forza getting 90 pounds from me for what could have been a complete game all of the content and everything, they are going to get at most 30 when it's on a significant discount. I did the same with Horizon 5 as well. I refunded the game very shortly after getting it because the game wasn't working. The week that I had... I didn't even get it refunded. They refused to refund it for me because I have been playing it and I've been messing around with it for like four hours. 
and they refused to refund me because their policy was that if you played it for more than an hour, you can't get a refund. So I did a bank chargeback for that one. And I got the money, so it was fine. But uh, I, I reversed the transaction on that payment because I, I wasn't going to be playing Forza Horizon 5 when, one, the Microsoft store broke itself that I couldn't update the game. And two, there was no actual physical way for me to play the game. I didn't have an Xbox at that time, by the way. Like, my uh, Xbox was fucked. It's working now because I got the hard drive fixed, but the hard drive was broken, so I couldn't play it on my Xbox One. Is it actually available on Xbox One anyways? I don't know. It might be. So I couldn't play it that way. I couldn't play it via my PC because the Microsoft Store is terrible on PC and it doesn't work. So I got the money back for that. And then I re-bought it on... Actually, no. Sinsu gifted it to me on Steam because I bought him a game. And then... Uh, what's it called? I then got the ultimate upgrade. But in total, the amount that was spent on that game after all the issues... 40 quid. So what would have been, again, a sale for Microsoft of £90. I think it was almost 100 actually. On the Xbox store. Of almost that much money. Going down to almost half. And there's, there's quite a few people that have done it as well. That have bought the game, the Ultimate Edition, and then refunded it. Because it's not working. Like. It's potential revenue that's just lost from day one. And they could quite easily. I'm not saying they should have delayed it anymore. Because they had six years to make this game. If you counter in the fact of COVID. For one year. That was actually like impossible. Give them the benefit of the doubt and say two years. They still had double the development time. Of any other Forza title that has ever existed, even Forza Motorsport 6, a game that everyone says is one of the worst in the series, still was better than Motorsport 8 in terms of content. The one thing is, I think the physics model actually looks quite fun, but a physics model is not the entire gameplay. Like, I'm sorry, for me to enjoy a game, I need the rest of the stuff as well. I need a game, I don't need a platform. Sure, if, if I enjoyed live service, and I enjoyed just driving cars, with no purpose other than maybe a weekly event or something, then fine. If you enjoy weekly events, it's, it's for you. But if you enjoy weekly events, like... They're, they're the reason they, the gaming industry is going downhill because of a lot of things that have come out recently. Battle passes. Weekly challenges. Fucking. I'm all for weekly challenges. As long as they're not the main point of the game. Like, you can't have the game release an update that for a month you've got all these series that you can do this month. And then, oh, here's some very basic series that we have. Oh, yeah, by the way, we don't have motorsport series. You know, the fact that we're called Forza Motorsport. But you know those uh, race cars that go round racetracks that are very loud? Yeah, no, you can't use those in any of the series. We haven't made that. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, the game's supposed to be updated on. The game's not ready. You can add DLC. There's nothing wrong with DLC, but there has to be a base game to start with. That's why I'd much rather game developers stop making free content as updates to a base game and charge people for it. I know it's going to be more expensive, but here's the issue. If you enjoy a game and you play enough hours in it, you're going to buy it anyways. 
right? The free content just makes a game terrible. It ruins the game in the long run. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.